function to water is so inefficient. Okay. I'll use the same ideas that, that, I, that I introduced for lithium air, and this is on, on platinum one on one. So this is the best known catalyst for the, for oxygen reduction. And so uh, this is the equilibrium potential for this reaction is 1.23 volts. Here you have traditional catalysis because the the the, the, the product moves away from the catalyst surface. So you have uh, at 1.23 volts, which is the equilibrium potential where oxygen in the gas phase is in equilibrium with water. Uh, you have four proton electron transfer steps. And so what you do is you add oxygen uh, to the surface as OOH, and then you you break the oxygen oxygen bond, form O and OH, and then you go to water. Now. Can you run this reaction at 1.23 volts? Well, no, because uh, you have you have to pay a thermodynamic penalty to get OOH onto the catalyst surface. You also have to pay a thermodynamic penalty to get OH off the surface, right? So these are the two difficult steps in this process. So getting rid of uh, getting o oxygen onto the surface is OOH, and getting rid of OH is water. Now, what do you have to do? Well, you have to crank down the potential and go to about 0.6 volts. At, which put, uh, at this potential, it is downhill in free energy to go from reactant to product, right? And so the most difficult step here is to remove OH to water, right? So this is the most difficult step on platinum 101, and this runs at about 0.76 volts, right? So now one can then say, well, uh, all one needs to do is to find a catalyst where it binds this intermediate weaker and then I can go to the uh, I can go to the product at a much higher potential. Well, there's a problem with this logic. The reason is the following: what I what I show here is the free energy of these three species, OH, O, and OOH, as a function of the free energy of OH. Mm -hmm. And what you see is all three are correlated. Right? So the free energy of OH scales with the uh, free energy of OOH scales with the free energy of OH. Free energy of O scales with the free energy of OH. And so what that means is. While you can make this step better, you will get to a point where then this step becomes limited, right? And what's really problematic is these two are separated by exactly 3.2, right? They, they're separated by this constant amount of 3.2. Why is this bad? This is really, really bad. The reason this is bad is because OOH and OH are separated by two steps, right? So the free, the free energy difference in an ideal catalyst should be twice 1.23, which is 2.46. Right? But the difference is 3.2, so this immediately tells you why you have to pay that 0.4 volt penalty because the best catalyst essentially will have an over potential that is 3.2 minus 2.46, which is about 0.8. You have two electrons, two proton electron transfer steps, so divide by two. So 0.4 volts is the best you can ever do. Right? And so this is this is of course on only one class of facets. This is the, the dense facet of, of metals, the one on one facet. Now, what happens when you look at other facets? The other facets could be important on a nanoparticle. In a real nanoparticle, you have uh, the dense facet, which is the 101. You have square facets, which is the 100. The story is exactly similar. The OOH and OH scale by the same 3.2. And it almost is universal, independent of whether you alloy the catalyst and any of these things. And this leads to what is a universal activity volcano. And this activity volcano sets the limit for how good your fuel cell catalyst can be. What I plot here is the log of the current normalized to platinum 101 on one, and free energy of hydroxide, which is the descriptor, and free energy of hydroxide relative to platinum 101. On one. And what you see here is uh, this activity volcano essentially sets the limit. So the, the, the black line is the theoretical prediction. And the and the dots and the and the squares are the experiments. And so if the if the line if the dots fall on the line, then our, our predictions are good. But what what is important to note is these are many orders of magnitude. This is on a, on a log scale. So these are many orders of magnitude uh, in current, and actually many orders of uh, magnitude even in, in binding energy. What is seen is platinum one one is good, but you can make it better by weakening the OH binding. And platinum three nickel one on one is exactly good for that reason. What you also see, which is very interesting, is all the 100 facets are to the left of the 101 facets. So if you take platinum 101, the platinum 100 is to the left. To the left means it binds stronger. Right? So uh, what this means is the 100 facets uh, are, are bind stronger. So therefore, in order to design good nanoparticle catalysts, what, what one should do is be on the right side of the volcano. The reason for this is if you are on the right side of the volcano on the dense facet, then you can use the more under-coordinated facets, such as the 100, and they are also active. And 
this is actually the case for platinum three nickel one and one and platinum three nickel one zero zero.